Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video was brought to you by a poll I took on my Instagram, so be sure to follow that. I gave you a lot the chance to choose my next video and this one won, so please enjoy. I started off by squaring the 45, that way there it's got something solid to hold it square while I tack on the rest of my pieces. Once I put my first sets of tacks on, I can stand the pipe up and then check it the next orientation. I know my table's level, so tacking it in that orientation, I can use my quick square to level the pipe and then make sure the face of the two 45s are level to each other. After I can move on to my next piece, which is another 45 piece. I tack the pipe so it doesn't roll while I set my 45 square. And then again, I stand it up, tack it onto the table, and I can double check to make sure it's running true. Using the shim is a quick and easy way of opening the gap and making sure it doesn't close up on you while you put your tacks on it. then I can weld the pieces up. And if you are like, interested in any consumables that I use on my mask, check the description. I've got a 10% off code for you guys to use. Now it's all welded up, I can go back to my table and put the next pieces on. I'm using my square as a spacer because the 45 is bigger than the pipe but that shouldn't matter too much because this pipe is um, a big 10 inch piece you wouldn't notice any issues with the pipe alignment again I've got the 245 sat on a piece of metal just to raise it up because the welds aren't letting it lay flat on the table That's why I use my table, because you can see underneath it, the whole pipe's running straight and true. So I've only tacked it in one orientation, so now I want to flip it around just to make sure I've got the set correct and to make sure the piece of pipe in the middle and to make sure the piece of pipe in the middle is at a 45 degree. I find any time you're messing with a 45, you want to spend as much time as possible making sure everything's square from the beginning. So by the time you get to this stage here, all the measurements add up. I was able to tack it because the measurements worked out perfect. And here I've just sped through welding the final two welds. Now I can put the flanges on. Again, because I made this on the table, I know that it's flat along its whole length. Here is just a case of using the levels to set the pipe up square ready for the flanges to go on. Anytime you're messing with 45s, always check and check and double check again because anytime you move anything, it tends to pull the 45s out of whack.
Checking the overall length on a piece of pipe like this is usually difficult and it's a gamble because the measurement you have could be off by up to 10 mil, 5 mil, purely because the cut isn't straight. But in my case, I was able to check it and it worked out bang on. My flange needed to hang off 15 mil, so I used a steel rule to pull the flange out of the 15 mil and then the chalk mark on the back. That way there, I don't have to check again. I just line it up to the chalk mark when I'm ready to put the flange on. Same goes for this flange on the 45. Put the mark on the back, I tack it, I pull the flange out and then I tack the bottom. When I tack, I always make sure they're in the center of the bolt holes because when you flip it 90 degrees and then you want to level it the other orientation, if your tacks aren't in the right spots, the bolt holes tend to wander when you twist the flange. Now in the second orientation, just double checking, making sure everything's right before I put the next tacks on. Again, checking the 45 before tacking the flange. Again, checking the 45 before tacking the flange. At the end, I'm putting a socket on. It's only a 15 mil socket. Four tacks, root all around it, and cap it at 180 to 200 amps. I like to weld my sockets all in one go, so I'm having to do it with one hand just to get the hose over the pipe. And now I can take the pipe off, use the crane, and then weld the flanges. These flanges are welded at around 250 amps. And you can see the amount of smoke that is pouring from the flanges into my face, which is why I use the Speedglass G501 welding mask, because there's no amount of holding your breath that will stop you from breathing in all this poison. One run is all that's needed inside these flanges and the pulse on the MIG welder takes care of these nicely. I'm welding the second from last flange and I forgot to hit record on the last flange so after this one's done the video's finished. There I'm sitting on my little trolley. I use that to help me get around the flanges when I'm welding them. It's a lot more easier than standing up hurting your back. But here we go, it's finished now. The timestamps on the videos show that this pipe took about three hours to do, which isn't the right time to do it. That's the beauty of MIG, you can work so much more faster than TIG or STICK. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Zombie apocalypse.